Ever since Samsung announced the S10 devices, I've had my eye on the S10e more than the other two devices. Partially because it's like a slightly cheaper device, it's $150 less than the S10, but I also think that for a lot of people, it's actually the better device of the two. And having used these two devices, the S10 and the S10e for the past week, and just deliberating between the two, I'm pretty confident that for me, and I think for a lot of people, the S10e is more appealing. And so aside from price, there's two reasons why I like it more than the S10. The first is actually the fingerprint sensor. So this is a fingerprint sensor that is mounted on the side. It's a capacitive sensor. It's kind of like the old school technology. Usually I find that side mounted fingerprint sensors aren't great. Like I've seen them on the Razer phone and other devices as well. There's some like, for whatever reason, companies usually do fingerprint sensors on the side flush to the bezel. Like there's no real tactile feedback as to where it is. On the S10e, it's like a very obvious spot as to where the fingerprint sensor is. Like you can feel it blindfolded and it's a great sensor. It's a high quality capacitive sensor and it just works very reliably. Now it also has this feature where you can roll down on the fingerprint sensor and it works in a manner to just pull down the top menu. It does take some time to get used to. Like when I first set it up, I was accidentally pulling down the top very frequently. Like I would just turn on the phone and would pull down the top menu by accident. But once you get used to the sensitivity, I found it quite useful. The other characteristic that I prefer about the S10e over the regular S10 is the ergonomics of the device. So the S10, the regular S10 has the kind of curved edges and we've seen this kind of aesthetic on the past few generations of Samsung Galaxy phones. And it's a very nice looking design, right? In the Samsung ads and renders, when they spin this device around in the videos and you can see the light kind of reflecting off the surface, it was sexy. Like it was 2015, they were one of the first companies to bend displays like that. It was really cool looking, but in 2019, four years later, this curved edge doesn't really give any kind of advantage to the screen. If anything, it actually makes the image look a little bit distorted when you're watching videos. I feel like for most people, a flat display, although it doesn't look as cool in videos and renders and stuff like that, is just a better device to hold. And if you're someone who likes to go caseless on a phone, it's smaller, it's got a more ergonomic design, throw a skin on it, you're good to go. The display is really nice. It's a 1080p panel, super bright, relatively thin bezels, even though there's a little bit of a chin. And then you have your circular hole punch. Now I personally prefer this circular hole instead of that pill shaped hole on the S10 plus, which is one of the reasons why I prefer these smaller phones. Now, if you compare the displays of the S10 to the S10e side by side, there is no doubt in my mind that the S10 has a better looking display. It's higher resolution. And anyone who says that they're identical is a filthy liar. The S10 does have a better display, but the S10e display is awesome. It is a pentile display, so at 1080p resolution, it's not like as sharp as you might think based on the numbers, but I really like this screen. Uh, One UI is pretty clean. I still have my reservations about how quickly and how frequently Samsung's gonna update the software on these phones, but I think that's something time will tell. The speakers are pretty clean and the cameras are great. The wide angle on the secondary lens is something that I felt like Samsung has always missed out on, like LG did it on their phones, I loved it. I'm glad that they chose a wide angle on the secondary camera instead of a zoom, uh, but just great images from this camera. It seems to have a very normal battery life, even though it has a relatively small battery, I think 31 milliamp hours. It's a lot smaller than the S10 battery, but because of the lower resolution screen and probably the lack of other features, they're just very similar in battery lives between the two phones. The reverse wireless charging is something that's kind of cool in this phone, but it's a feature that I probably won't use very often. I just don't have enough wireless accessories to make use of it, but if you do, it's there. There are a few things I don't love, uh, Bixby is still here. And the way they've implemented the whole Bixby button customization doesn't allow you to fully remove it. Like you can set it to a double tap instead of the single tap, which is better than nothing. But I just like to see it completely gone. I feel like hardware buttons for assistance shouldn't be a thing. Other things I don't love about it, I wish the power button was a little bit lower than it is. Like this is relatively high up on the frame. This is something that affects all the S10 devices, but that's a minor complaint. Um, oh, if you're interested or curious, if you're left-handed and you want to use the fingerprint sensor, I've tested it. So if you're left-handed, you're probably turning on this phone with kind of like the side of your finger, either your index or middle finger, and it just works perfectly fine. You just have to map that part of your finger to the fingerprint sensor and it works. Now for the people that are deciding between the Galaxy S10e and Apple's 10R, I gotta be fair here. If you're just looking at hardware, there's basically no comparison. The Samsung S10e is just a way better phone in terms of hardware than Apple's iPhone XR. However, if you are deeply into that Apple ecosystem, like you have a whole bunch of Apple devices like MacBooks and you're running HomeKit and stuff like that in your house, 
The Galaxy S10e is gonna feel out of place in your ecosystem. There's no way to spin it. This is still a Samsung device. It is still an Android device. And as good as the hardware is, I can see why people would opt for the 10 <laughs> Like as, as much of a joke of a phone as this is to some people, there still is that software debate. But if you're not locked into that ecosystem or if you're trying to bust out of it, the Galaxy S10e should be the choice between the two. So overall, S10e, such a good phone. It's small, great hardware, great camera, headphone jack. There's like so much I like about this phone. And I think for a lot of people, this should be the pick between the S10s this year. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.